here we are for chapter 18, talking about how do atoms bond and attract each other, and sounds pretty uh, attractive topic, so here we go. Um, first of all, we need to talk a little bit about uh, electrons again and atoms and how we draw them and their electrons, valence electrons. So if we take, for example, um, sodium, which is element number 11 on the periodic table, okay, and we take sodium, and we'll draw the atom for that. Uh, since the atomic number is 11, this is like 23, and this was a periodic table here, our friend giving us all this information here. Okay, we know that there's going to be 11 protons because that's what the atomic number is. It tells us what element this is. Uh, we know by subtracting these two, we get 12 neutrons, plus or minus. Okay, and in order for this to be a neutral atom, we would have to have 11 electrons to cancel out the 11 protons here. So we have two on the first row, is all I can hold. The second row, hold eight. That gives us a total of 10, but we need one more, so it's going to be a third layer on here. And we put one on there. Okay, and so that gives us a total of 11 negative electrons, and that balances out. Okay, and that would be our sodium atom. All right. Uh, now, let's do another example real quick over here. Let's do fluorine. Fluorine, which is capital F, spelled F-L-U, fluorine. You can use this capital fluorine. Um, and it has um, 19, it's atomic number 9, and it has an atomic mass of roughly 19, 19 AMUs. Okay, if we're going to draw that, we know that uh, fluorine then would have uh, nine protons, and subtract those two, we get ten neutrons. Nine neutrons, okay. And they're going to be one, two on the first level, which leads us to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven on the second level. All right, and that would be the uh, drawing or what a an atom of fluorine would look like if it were neutral. Now, if they were just neutral atoms, we would never combine them. They would never attract to each other. Uh, if you take two neutral things and stick them together, they're not going to stick unless one's positive and one's negative. You need opposites. The old saying, opposites attract. Well, in this case, that's exactly right. All right, so we need to have that. Now, in order to get these charges, it all has to do with the valence electrons. If you remember, the valence electrons are the outside electrons. So on uh, fluorine over here, it would have how many valence electrons? Just one. Uh, sodium, sorry. So the fluorine, on the other hand, over here, would have on its outside layer, would have seven. So the valence electrons are just the ones on the outside, all right? And they're called valence or valiant, same word we get valiant from, because they're the ones that do all the work and make things react and things happen and stuff like that. So these are the valence electrons, okay? Now, to show the valence electrons, since they're the only ones that are important, rather than drawing the whole atom a lot of times, what we'll do is just draw the symbol of the atom. And then we'll put dots to show how many valence electrons they have. This is called the Lewis dot structure, makes sense, because um, you're using dots. The man who uh, came up with the idea is named Lewis. So Lewis dot structure, all right, or electron dot structure. All right, and what we do is basically we just put a dot. It has one valence electron. For sodium, it would be very simple. We just put one dot outside it. Okay, fluorine, on the other hand, when we look at its valence electrons, has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So, um, how do we put those seven on there? Well, we have four sides, okay? Um, as we talked about happy atoms and sad atoms, atoms are truly happy if they have a full outer layer, okay? And so, they always want to have a full outside layer, which except for this first layer, which has this first layer has two, but the other layers, that means having eight, okay? And they want eight in their outside layer most of the time. It's just called the octet rule, okay? And this just means that atoms want eight electrons for a full out layer. Their, their valence electrons, they want that layer to be full, and it needs to have eight, except for, like I said, the first layer, which only has uh, two, but in general it's going to be eight. So that's why it's called the octet rule, because octet is eight. All right. Now, fluorine is going to have seven, all right? 
And uh, these electrons are just like us. They kind of pair up within these eight places. They tend to pair up. But kind of like us, if we were given rooms, if we had four people in four rooms, we would probably separate out. Each person gets their own room, okay? And that's kind of what the electrons do. One gets here, one gets on this side, and this pair, one gets in this pair, and one gets in this pair. Okay, but that's only four, and we need three more. Then they start pairing up, but they don't pair up until they have to. So then they would pair up here, two, and here. So now, we would have uh, only one that has not paired up. Okay, and so that would be the um, Lewis dot structure for fluorine. Now, notice we have different kinds. We have unpaired electrons, such as this one over here in sodium, and we have this one over here in fluorine. They are unpaired. And we have paired, that have already doubled up. Okay, uh, so these here are called paired valence electrons, which is that, yeah, valence electrons. Okay, and sometimes they are called non bonding. Pairs. And the reason they're called non-bonding pairs, when it comes to bonding with other atoms, these electrons, these paired up ones, don't do anything either. Even though they're valence electrons, they are not very helpful. They do not pair. They're stable. Uh, they're happy. they got their partner. they got their buddy. They're good. They don't need to change anything. All right? It's these unpaired ones, like the one here in chlorine, the one in sodium. These are the unpaired valence electrons, okay? And they are also known as, guess what, bonding pairs, okay? And these are the, or not bonding, but these are the electrons that are going to be involved in bonding. Actually, I should have said uh, bonding pairs. They're not bonding pairs, but they are going to be involved in um, bonding. So, um, they're unpaired right now, and they're going to be the ones that allow these to bond, okay? And they will bond in different ways. Um, one of the first kind of ways they compare is what we call ionic bonding. Okay. Now, right now the sodium is neutral and the fluorine is neutral. And that means that they uh, do not have a charge and therefore they will not stick together. But sodium has an extra one here. It is a metal. It doesn't really care to hang on to its electrons very well. It's not very electronegative. Fluorine is very electronegative, and it would like to hang on to electrons. Not only does it hang on to its own electrons, but it would be glad to grab this one away from that. Okay, and that is exactly what happens. This little electron is right here, and fluorine pulls it over here. Okay, so these were neutral atoms, but now they have both become ions, and ions are just atoms with a charge. Okay, and so sodium has lost a negative electron. Now instead of, now it only has 10 electrons and 11 protons because it lost this one. So now it has one more positive, so it has a plus one charge. Okay, and in particular we would say this is a cation. Okay, so it's a, if an ion is just an atom with a charge, a cation is one with a positive charge. Okay, so a cation, I think of it as I positively hate cats. You can think of it as I positively love cats, or however you want to do it. But a cation has a positive charge. Now, fluorine, on the other hand, has gained another electron over here. So now it actually has 10 negative electrons and only 9 protons. So it has a negative 1 charge. Okay, and that makes it an anion. I think of this as a negative, a n, a negative ion is going to be a anion. So it has a negative charge, an atom with a negative charge. Okay, so there's two types of ions. Ions just means they have a charge. Cation means they have a positive charge. Anion has they have a negative charge. Metals tend to lose their electrons and they tend to gain and get a positive charge. Uh, Nonmetals tend to lose uh, gain electrons. Sorry, sodium loses electrons, so it becomes positive. And fluorine gains uh, electrons, so it becomes negative. So we have an cation and an anion. And now, since they are opposite charges, they will attract each other, and they will stick to each other. Okay. And now we can put these two atoms together because one's plus one, one's minus one. They're equal charges, and they pull together, 
and act as one now. Okay, and this would be an ionic bond. All right, and generally when this happens then, you have a metal such as sodium that loses an electron and becomes positive. You have a non-metal that gains an electron and becomes negative. And since they have opposite charges, they are attracted to each other. Okay, and this makes up what we would call an ionic compound. All right, so sodium fluoride, which is basically what's in your toothpaste, all right, is an ionic compound because one actually lost electron, the other one gained it, positive and negative, and that positive and negative holds them together. Now, if we make an ionic compound, all right, uh, generally speaking, uh, these tend to form crystals. A lot of minerals are made out of uh, ionic compounds. Uh, many of the minerals that we see, um, minerals, and uh, minerals are just naturally, naturally occurring crystalline. And so, any of these naturally occurring crystals uh, are very often ionic compounds. Um, and they make, based on the shape of the uh, crystal that they form, uh, uh, calcite is a very common one, calcium carbonate, uh, halites, rock salt, pyrite, which is fool's gold, which makes little rectangles. Um, for example, you can see here, um, uh, you can see the very definite shape of the salt crystals. If you look at salt crystals up close, they are little perfect cubes almost, okay? And they have this square shape around them, depending on how many atoms, stuff like that. You see where a chunk's missing, but notice the chunk that broke off would have been a little cube that came off of it, okay? And so they tend to have that. Now, um, the other thing is that when you make these together, the charges must be equal. So if the compound is neutral, okay? Uh, for example, here's sodium. Um, I can show in our example, sodium would have a plus one charge. Fluorine, just like fluorine, has seven on the outside layer, so it would gain one electron. It would have a negative one charge, and so they would match, okay? And that would come out nice and even for one sodium, one chlorine, and that would be good, okay? Um, now, unfortunately, of course, that doesn't always happen that way because not all metals have a plus one charge. Not all non-metals have a negative one charge. Okay, uh, let's look at another example real quick. Okay, um, this is calcium. All right, calcium is in the second column, so it has a charge of plus two, and it has two cals. It has two um, valence electrons. All right, fluorine, like we said, the other one has seven. Okay, so it wants to take one of these, which it can. It takes this one away. Boom. And it rips it over and says, here, I'll have that one, okay? But the problem is, that makes calcium plus one, and that makes this one negative one. But it hasn't got rid of its valence electron. It's not happy yet, okay? And so, uh, in order to make this work, we have to have another fluorine atom come up. All right? And it does the same thing this one did. It... Fluorine very much wants to have its electronegative. It wants to hold on to electrons, even some that aren't its electrons. So it grabs the one from the fluorine and uh, uh, the calcium, sorry, it takes that one and it brings it over here. Okay? And so, um, In order to make, now that gives the calcium, it lost two electrons, so now it has a plus two charge. And this fluorine has a negative one, this fluorine has a negative one, and so now they can join together, and the calcium would be flacked by two fluorines or hooked to it. So the formula for calcium fluoride would be CaF2, because it takes two atoms of, of uh, fluorine to absorb all the valence electrons at the calcium. All right, and then another example would be aluminum, which has a plus three charge, because it has three valence electrons. Oxygen has two. And in order for that to come out evenly, it ends up taking two aluminums 
and three oxygens, or then we have the same number. 